if you'd like to get things started. Go ahead, Chris. Coach, just talk away about the way you guys are following Josh's lead and, and how good he's been for you. Yeah, Josh has been a tremendous leader this year, as you guys know. Anybody that's been watching um, knows that. He's the, he's the heart of the defense, ties all the fronts and coverages together, um, and has done to, a, a tremendous job. Um, you know, he's infectious to the people around him. Um, when you talk about, like, Kalel Mullins and Nakai Hill Green and Junior Colston, Mike Barrett, Joey Velasquez, whoever it is, they follow his leadership. And, uh, you know, the group's coming together nicely. We're chasing perfection every day. And um, that's something that we talk about all the time, even though it's not always the outcome. Um, and Josh definitely sets the tone for the group. And we've heard about Joey's work ethic. Just how cool was it to see him get that play on special teams? It was awesome. It was uh you know, special teams, as everyone knows, and Jay was just up here talking about it, it's a third of the game. You know, offense, defense, and special teams. And Joey's a tremendous competitor. As you guys know, he's a two-sport athlete. And we challenge the guys in our room every week to be the player of the game on special teams. In the past two weeks, it's been Michael Barrett, um, and it's been Joey Velasquez that recovered that fumble that was huge, um, really in the turnover point of the game. So uh, it's not always defense. It's special teams, it's offense, it's defense. Very happy for Joey. All he does is give 100% effort every day. He goes to the look squad. Um, early on in the year, he was on some of the special teams look squad, earned a spot on a couple of the teams right now, and continues to do a tremendous job. So it's good to see. Coach, we all see Josh Ross and his value on the field. What's his value off the field to the team? His value off the field is he is a tremendous competitor um, and student in the classroom. You know, I was just up there with Josh 30 minutes ago. He's sitting down in my office. We're talking ball. Um, he understands the full picture. So he understands the scheme of what we're trying to do um, and how our packages utilize him and the people around him. And then he also understands um, the preparation that goes into it um, from, you know, just the attention to detail that's involved in the week-to-week -week stuff from watching film and then be able to make in-game adjustments on the field. Is that? What's the difference between the Nakai Hill Green that you inherited and the one that you've seen in the last couple of weeks? We talked about it a little bit last time, Isaiah. I mean, he's really changed his body in the offseason. Um, I think Nakai weighed like 241 pounds. Um, he got with Abigail, our nutritionist, this offseason. He committed to a plan that we had for him this offseason, stuck to the plan and changed his body, um, lost about 15 pounds and, and put on a lot of good muscle weight. And then just Nakai for his age, you know, I was talking about when Josh went down in the Rutgers game rolling a bunch of 18 year olds, you know, I mean, Khalil just turned 19 on Monday, you know, and uh, just being a student of the game and knowing what to do and how to do it and why it's important to do it that way. And, you know, the way that he sits up and takes notes and asks questions and studies film says everything. Um, and I think you're starting to see um, he's really playing comfortable out there. So to kind of follow up, have you seen him kind of grow, even just particularly from week one to week five, and how has that manifested itself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we in our last game, he was starting in the uh, first and second down package. We had Junior rolling in the third down package. Um, you know, we're going to continue to change that up week to week. Um, but we've got a good idea of who's comfortable doing what, and we want to put the best 11 players out there week to week um, to put ourselves in the best chance to be successful. Chris? Given what Nebraska runs offensively, is this going to be one of the bigger challenges for your group this year? Yeah, when you look at Nebraska, they do a lot um, on offense. And you've got to be sound and you've got to be disciplined. You've got to put your eyes in the right spot. Um, and you've got to be relentless pursuit to the ball. I mean, as you've seen on tape, they've run some triple option stuff out of the gun. Um, you've got to play sound football across the board. And um, that's been a point of emphasis this week as always. And then the other thing that you got to do is you got to tackle. You know, on defense, it's about running, getting 11 hats to the ball, and tackling well. And when you get some of those type plays, you got to tackle well on the perimeter. So it's not only how you finish tackling, it's the entry angles that you take to the ball. Our guys know that. We're going to continue to work that this week. John? Ross says he's quicker 
Jim says he's quicker and faster. You get to this stage in your career, is it more uh, that you can actually get physically faster, or uh, is it the experience, even in a, a new defense? That's a good question. Um, I think the biggest thing is, like, you know, Josh was up in the office 30 minutes ago. He's learning, like, when you know what plays are coming, um, based off whether it's the alignment of the tight ends or the backfield sets, you can anticipate things happening. I don't know um, if he's faster right now than he was physically last year, but the way that he reacts to stuff, the way that he's seeing the game, and the way that he's playing sure looks faster to me.